Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you are not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. This video is about the full moon happening in the sign of Gemini on December 7th, 2022 at 11.08 p.m. And this is five things that I would like to share with you when it comes to the full moon energy. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the numerology associated with the day. So the day of the full moon is Wednesday and Wednesday, of course, is associated with Mercury energy. And the day of the full moon is the seventh and the energies in the day add up and reduce the number seven vibration. So the number seven energy is amplified. But before I dive into the seventh energy, let's talk about the month. December is the 12th month. December energy carries the number one energy within it, the father energy, action-oriented energy, which is masculine energy, the number two energy, the mother energy, nurturing energy, which is feminine energy, introverted energy. This is where we have an idea, the number one, and the number two, we go inside of ourselves with that idea and nourishes it nurtures it into something tangible which is the number three one plus two adds up and reduces to the number three so december carries that total package energy where we are idea oriented we have an idea but then we're also able to take a, take action on that idea and then give birth to something tangible which is the number three energy the year is 2022 and the energies within the year adds up and reduces to the number six vibration. The number six energy talks about family, community, responsibility. But December 2022 comes together and talks about endings, bringing something to an end, evolving something to the next level. That's what the number nine is all about. When you think about the number nine, think about being a senior and how what you do that year will determine where you end up next year. It'll determine your score, your grade. It'll determine the kind of experience you'll have next, how much work you'll have to do, or how much you'll get to relax because of what you've done in the past. So when it comes to, say, the energies of December, this month is all about releasing, releasing and getting ready for new things. When I look at the energies of the month having to do with releasing and new beginning and the full moon energy, full moon energy also talking about releasing of energy, I go to the seven aspect of the day. The day being the seventh and adding and reducing to the number seven vibration is introspection. And this is where we're seeking truth. We're seeking understanding. The number seven is a rebellious energy and the number seven is even present within the degrees of the full moon because the moon is at 16 degrees. Also, Mars is at 16 degrees in Gemini and the sun, which opposes the moon, is at 16 degrees. One plus six adds up to the number seven. The number one aspect is the individual. It's the self. It's the I am. The number six is community. It's responsibility. But the seven is introspection. This is where we're going within ourselves to find truth that can only come from within because we're all having our own unique experiences. So if we're all having our own unique experiences, then that means we need to seek counsel within to find out what's best for oneself because what's best for me is not necessarily what's best for you. So this is where you have to go within yourself to check in and see what is best, what makes sense for you. So when it comes to the the 
full moon energy introspection is a big part of it. So with the number seven energy amplified and repeated so many times, this full moon energy will have an isolating feeling to it because of the, the level of introspection that is necessary in order to tr transform and evolve to the next level when it comes to this full moon energy. Because full moon energy is all about releasing, which leads me to the second thing that I want to share with you and the Gemini energy and the full moon and Gemini energy. So Gemini energy talks about communication. Gemini energy talks about community responsibility, our siblings, our family members. When I think of Gemini energy, I think about the duality that exists within all of us, how there are, how opposites, opposites, attract type of energy, how we have one side of us that is sociably acceptable, the side of us that we show up with, the side of us that we feel safe to show others. And then there's another side of us that might be spiritual, might be aggressive, might be taboo, the side of us that we hide away from others. And in some situations, this is where some people will seem two-faced and that comes from not feeling safe enough to show all aspects of oneself. So within all of us, we have parts of our personalities that we hide away and parts of our personalities that we feel safe to show others because it is what is acceptable. So with the Gemini energy, the Gemini energy talks about that duality. The Gemini energy talks about information, communication, community. And also to familiarity, because when I think of Gemini energy, I think of our local community and our family members, the things or the people we were born into, the things or the people that we feel like we didn't choose because we came into this world seeing them. And with Gemini energy, this is where we'll gravitate more towards the things that are familiar only because it's safe, even when it is destructive. So with Gemini energy, and the full moon focus on Gemini energy, this is where release is focused on, say, how you're communicating. How can you communicate in a way that is true to yourself, but at the same time gets your message across because other people can understand what it is that you're saying because that's what they're familiar with. It's the importance of balance. Where Gemini energy brings me to the thought of balance, but most of us aren't balanced because we dwell more on the side of ourselves that is sociably acceptable. The third thing that I want to talk to you about when it comes to this full moon energy is the importance of release. And full moon energy is when the sun and the moon are opposing each other. So there's a tug and war that's happening. And in order to make the most of this energy is to create balance. And the full moon is a releasing energy. This is where we're releasing and we're clearing space to make room for something else. And the full, the moon and Gemini conjuncts, conjunct Mars. The moon conjuncts Mars and Gemini. And Mars is in retrograde and will be in retrograde until like the second, first half of January. And Mars energy talks about our motivation, our ambition, and our will. So with Mars in, conjunct the moon in Gemini, this is where endings are associated with our level of motivation and energy and what it is that we have to give or contribute to, say, communicating family members, siblings, what's familiar. What's coming to mind is this full moon is helping us to be honest about, say, how we'll feel loyal to certain friend groups, certain communities, or certain people just because we've always known them. With Mars in retrograde, Mars energy made it makes it feel like we're driving on four flat tires. So with the whole driving on four flat tire situation, this is where things that didn't require much energy before requires way more energy. Before Mars was in retrograde, while Mars is direct, think about a current naturally pulling you in a certain direction. Because the current is pulling you in a direction, you could just sit in the boat and go for the ride, go for a ride. It doesn't require much rowing or anything. Or with Mars in retrograde, a lot of energy is required. So this is where you're reflecting on how much energy you give to your family, your community, the people who are familiar, even say the mother energy with, with moon conjunct Mars and Gemini. But you're reflecting on 
your loyalty to what's familiar opposed to say sun and aquarius things that are foreign things that are unfamiliar and to me a nice balance would be one where you don't feel obligated to people just because of titles where if you took the title away would their behavior be acceptable if there was no longer a title would you put up with what they bring if there was no longer a title would you have the same energy towards this thing I feel like that will help to create balance when it comes to the Gemini aspect of it. And then the Sag energy with the whole exploring and adventure. This is where we can be so optimistic about the grass being greener over there just because it's something different. But the grass is green wherever we water it. So when I look at the full moon energy, the tug of war between what's familiar, what's local, and what's unique what's different what's foreign it comes back to your truth what what is your truth and what is important to you because sag energy is where we try to learn about ourselves by exploring other cultures other religions other philosophies and things that are different where gemini is when we learn about the things that are quick information nothing we don't take anything too serious but at the same time we miss out on a lot because we don't get to see the entire picture where a nice balance is being selective on your attention gemini and sag energy both deals with information how we are informed so definitely something coming to an end when it comes to information and how we are being informed and when it comes to what's happening in the world definitely a war on the mind as far as a war on information trying to persuade you in one direction or the next trying to get your attention to focus on one thing or the next and it comes down to checking in with yourself again with the number seven energy associated with the day what is your truth and why is that your truth is something that could be super beneficial when it comes to analyzing these energies within the day the fourth thing that i want to talk to you about is challenges when i look at the full moon energy it's a part of a t-square that's happening between jupiter conjunct neptune jupiter conjunct neptune and pisces jupiter conjunct neptune and pisces is squaring the sun the sun in, in sagittarius also Venus and Mercury and Mars conjunct the moon in Gemini. So when I look at the T-square that's happening, the challenge that I'm looking at is how we're fighting against our intuition and our imagination because it's not practical. And I mentioned the whole Gemini energy and how there's two sides within all of us and we tend to dwell more on the side that's sociably acceptable that's what i see with the square between neptune conjunct jupiter squaring mars conjunct moon and gemini this is where with the gemini energy we don't want to look a certain way so we hide one parts of ourselves away in the closet and only show up with the representative when I look at Jupiter conjunct Neptune squaring Sag, Venus, and Mercury, Mercury is in Capricorn though. When I look at that square, I think of how with Sag and Capricorn energy, Sag and Capricorn energy deals with authority and authority as far as what we aspire to because it's respectable. I think of the alchemist and I've been using the alchemist as an example for Sag energy in the book, the alchemist, there is this very intelligent man on the caravan caravan that Santiago, the main character met on his way to meeting the alchemist. And this very intelligent man felt like he could read his way to becoming an alchemist. He could read his way to spirituality when it's something that we embody on an internal and spiritual level. And when I look at Sag and Capricorn energy, this is where some of us feel like our positions, we could read our way. We could read our way to, to peace. We can read our way or our status will get us to wherever it is that we're trying to go. And that's just not true. And when we look around at the people in our lives who have took that route, or if you have took that route, where instead you worshiped your titles and your titles and your positions only to find yourself feeling depleted, like something is missing. 
What's missing is the heart. What's missing is the soul. What's missing is checking in. So when I look at the challenges associated with the day, the challenge associated with the day is that one, having a hard time listening to the intuition, listening to the inner guidance and not knowing if you could trust it is what's coming up and not knowing if you could trust it because we've been conditioned to trust the things that collectively we agree upon. Not that we can prove individually, but we collectively agree upon these things. And that's what I like to call a fact, a collective agreement. So there's this battle going on between what's coming from within us and how it is not in alignment with the collective truth. So that's the challenge that I see within the day. But when it comes to say this full moon energy, the fifth thing that I want to talk to you about is how to make the most of this energy. And you make the most of this energy by questioning yourself. Gemini, like Sag energy, is information energy. It talks about how we inform ourselves and inform others. And the way how I like to get to the root of things is by questioning myself and certain beliefs that I have. Because most of my beliefs didn't come from me. Most of my beliefs are programmings and conditionings. And when I question them off, I always get to the bottom and the truth that fits with me, the truth that helps me to thrive. So when it comes to making the most of the day, the, the best way to make the most of this energy is to tap into the number seven vibration. And the number seven vibration is a truth seeking energy. But this is where you have to put down the cell phone, put down the devices and go inside yourself to find your truth. And why is that your truth? How does it make you feel? This is where it's important for us to check in with our feelings. We've been conditioned over the years to dismiss feelings and, oh, feelings aren't facts and this, that, and the next. But feelings are a great way to navigate your situation by understanding yourself so much better and what is your truth and what speaks to you. Because the body is psychic. The body will tell you what time it is through the years I have learned to ask myself a question and pay attention to how my body reacts, like ask myself a question and get silent and pay attention to how my body reacts. And my body will tell me if this is something that is against my truth or not, because the body has memory. The body knows the body is connected to the earth. The mind is the thing that keeps us in a loop like a hamster on a wheel. When it comes to the mind, to me personally, I feel like the mind is like an internet, something that we all share collectively. It's almost like there's an algorithm that runs the mind where different impressions is projected out on us all collectively. And maybe the algorithms is the planets and the vibrational poles from the planets. And depending on where the planets are and how close they are, that degree has a stronger effect on us where collectively we'll find ourselves thinking very similar and feeling like we want the same things. Where when we get still like the number seven energy, get introspective and go within, we can find out what our truth is and become aware of how it's natural for the mind to gravitate towards certain ways of thinking, being and doing. And we don't allow our mind, we, we become aware that the mind does it, but we don't allow that to control our world or our reality. When it comes to this full moon energy and the full moon happening in Gemini and full moon dealing with endings, this is where we can hear news of endings when it comes to say news about education. And when it comes to Gemini and our education, this could be education on a certificate or degree a certificate, a certificate on a certificate level, or even say purchasing courses and things like that. It could be some kind of not necessarily restrictions, but maybe different rules are set in place so that say higher authorities could make more money off of education. Something with education, something with education could find itself coming to an end or evolving to the next level or maybe certain restrictions that were present, maybe those are coming to an end that makes education more available to everyone else. I think of, say, Gemini energy dealing with social media 
And when it comes to this full moon energy, there might be something coming to an end when it comes to some aspect of social media. I know when it came to the new moon and Sag energy, I talked about how we can expect to see new beginnings when it comes to higher education, publishing and information and even restrictions associated with that. And someone had tagged me in a post on Instagram about how Barnes and Nobles was banning certain books and things like that because of certain controversy controversies in the media. And of course, I'm sure that's happened in the past. And with social media, we're able to have eyes on so many things so fast. But with this full moon energy happening in Gemini, I get the feeling of something coming to an end when it comes to social media and the control on information. But with the moon positively aspecting Saturn, I get the feeling that this ending is something that's beneficial to the people. I get the feeling that this ending is something that will promote free speech. It could be something that's done to promote free speech, but maybe that's not the intention. Maybe the intention was to do something else, but it's benefiting the collective. Regardless of what's happening in, in the world and the different power struggles that happen between those who are trying to run and control the world or trying to make the impressions on our minds and help cause us to manifest one way or the next. To me, regardless of what people do, there's a higher power that is in charge. And to me, it all comes down to the intentions, meaning those who are operating in negative with negative intentions will only cre keep creating more negative. So no matter what their intentions are or how much power the powers that be think they have. Their intentions is determining the outcome of everything. So I look at how one's intention might be to do one thing and then it creates a totally opposite effect. And look out in the world and see how that's working, how it might appear that certain people have power and control, but they keep manifesting more and more of their intentions. I think back to say how in the past, how say slavery days, how religion was given to the slaves with the intention to control them. But instead it did the opposite where for some, they, it was used as a way how to uplift others to fight back. Even though the intentions was to do one thing, it did something else. So to me, it's all about our intentions. So I don't stress myself or worry about what's happening in the world. I just trust that every, the creator is always working for me. Life and the universe is always conspiring on my behalf. And it's important that you remember the same. Life is always conspiring for you and on your behalf. And when it comes to your intentions, be clear about your intentions and take action. Make sure your intentions are for your greatest good, your highest good for everyone else's greatest good, because we're all mirrors and lights. We're all mirrors and lights. So we project the light out and whatever light we project out, someone else comes in front of us and they become that mirror that projects that light back to us. And we're just bouncing light off each other back and forth. We're all light beings just bouncing, projecting, reflecting and projecting light back and forth. So to me, it comes down to in intentions. What are your intentions? And that's all that matters. That's all that matters and nothing else. So when it comes to this full moon energy in Gemini, like I mentioned, when it comes to friend groups, family members, and your local community, take the titles away and ask yourself if this wasn't my so-and-so, and if we didn't always know each other. This is where familiarity could be destructive, even though it's familiar. You take the titles away and you look at a person's actions. You look at how a person has been showing up consistently. And from that, this might determine the next level of the relationship. Does it evolve and turn into something better or does it decline because it has never been working for you and it's been destructive all along? Also to with communication. When it comes to your communication, have you been saying too much or have you not been saying enough? Because it all comes down to say communication when it comes to healthy relationships and connections. Other people can't 
meet our needs if they don't know what we need. And it goes both ways. So when it comes to communication, friendship, dynamics, how can you create more peace for yourself? Are you saying too much? Are you saying not enough? When it comes to other people in your life and the things that you're dealing with or put up with, if you took away the title, would you still deal with or put up with these things? Those are some things to ask yourself and to make the most of this energy. And like I mentioned with the number nine vibration, it's all about releasing, just like the full moon energy. The ending is the beginning. So there's no reason to fear and always a reason to celebrate. But as soon as you release what's no longer working for you, you can make room for what deserves to be in your world, what deserves to be in your life. You guys, such a pleasure sharing this message with you. If you'd like to check out the extended version of this video that will be available on Patreon, the link for that is in the description box below. If you'd like to book a natal chart reading, that link is also in the description box below. If you're still here with me, I'd love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a purple heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it, because it does. Take care of yourself, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.